Welcome to the December 5th, 2018, Your Living Brand Live show. My name's Ben Baker, and my company is Your Brand Marketing. Welcome to the show. Now, this show is all about value. How do you add value? How do you communicate your value? Why do people care about you? And why should they do business with you? Because when they care about you, when they trust you, you stop being a commodity and you start being a brand worth loving. You stop being one of many and you start being the one people sit there and go, oh, I trust this person. Yeah, they may be a little bit more money, but I know that they're always going to do the job and they're always going to take care of me. And that's worth it to me. And that's what this show is about. How do different companies add value? Now, today, I have Brett Fuller coming to you live from California. Brett has a company called Broker Brett. He's a small insurance agent sitting in California. And we had a conversation today where he actually sat down and asked me some really good questions. And we talked about his brand and how do we make it better. So sit back, enjoy the talk, and I'll be back once the talk is over. Hey, Brett, thanks for being on the show today. Welcome to the Your Living Brand Live show. Absolutely, Ben. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to diving into it, discussing you know my brand, your story, and uh, kind of growing from there. Absolutely. So for people who don't know this show, you know, and it's growing, which is great. I love this awesome. show, the fact that this show is just yeah. growing. It has to do with what's your value. You know, mm. how, what do you bring to the table? What makes you different? What makes you unique? You know, mm. what is your story? So let's dive into it. Let's dive into Broker Brett. Let's dive mm. into, you know, who you are, what you do, why you do it. You know, who's the audience you're trying to influence? And mm. you know what, what makes you different? Why should they care? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll try to do the uh, 30 second elevator pitch. Um, yeah, we got time. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I'll do the uh, how many seconds in 20 minutes. The, there you we know, go. 1200 minutes, 1200 second. Exactly. Um, so I got into insurance through doing corporate relocations, not the most direct path, but it seems like that's mainly the story for insurance agents. You don't really plan on it. Something that kind of comes up, you see the upside and you go for it. I was uh, trying to insure the buildings I was going into, trying to insure the real estate to know where the deals were going to be. You know, right. didn't really click how I thought, but got me licensed a couple of years back. And about two years ago, I started working at an agency um, it's really hard to get people to fill out insurance applications. I don't know if it's a surprise, you know, people don't want to spend time. We all love paperwork. I mean, I, yeah, I don't understand. Exactly. People just love those 22 page forums. I don't know why. Paperwork and bills, you know, signing up for those, you know, uh, a friend did compare insurance to extortion the other day and I thought that was pretty funny and couldn't really come up with a rebuttal how it was different. Um, but so I created a website, brokerbrett.com, to have really easy forms for home, auto, right. small business. So if anybody's interested, I could send them one link, populate online. I can go back to a rater. Fast forward a couple sales jobs later, fast forward a year or two later, uh, I decided I want to open my own brokerage. So cool. I kind of morphed that project into a brokerage. And I work with Heffern and Insurance, work with Ollie Insurance. They're my back office. They're phenomenal. Have me appointed with a ton of great carriers. And I have this brand now that is out there, but I'm having a little bit of a hard time converting it to action. And I'm trying to figure out how I go from being known to being somebody that's utilized. And I do worry right. a little bit that Broker Brett's a little bit of a light theme for more of a serious topic. So I'm working on figuring that out. And I have a brokerage name I'm rolling out later called Newport Beach Insurance Center. But in the meantime, how do I take, you know, fun light Broker Brett that talks about insurance and turn it into deals is kind of the, the crossroads we find ourselves at today. You know? well, and, and that's an interesting conversation to have yeah. because every brand is unique. Every brand is mm -hmm. different, you mm -hmm. know, and we don't all need to be this serious, you know, yeah. corporate, you know, button down tie three piece suit type brand. Right. We need to be who we are. Every mm -hmm. brand has to be representative of the people within it, whether it's a personal brand, whether it's a corporate brand, whatever, you need to be representative of who you are and you need to embrace it. This, mm -hmm. this is who I am. This is what I believe. This is what I do. This is what I don't do. This mm -hmm. is what I'm good at. These are the people that I serve. And you build your brand based on that. And the name is really a reflection of who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are, you know, the car, the, the collar's a little bit loose, yeah. you know, you know, we, we, <laughs> we wear dockers, maybe shorts in the summer, then have a brand that, you know, that supports that. Mm -hmm. If you take a look and you sit there and say, okay, I need to be this corporate brand because that's what's expected of me. Guess what? Then you're just the same as everybody else. Right. You sure. are just the same as every other brand out there. And when you're exactly like that, you're a commodity. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And you need to stop being a commodity. You need to be who you are. So let's let's drill into this a little bit. Let's drill into this yeah. and, and take a look at it, sit there and say, what are the customers you really want to serve? Who are the best customers that you have? When, when you look through your Rolodex today, mm -hmm. who are the people that, first of all, you really enjoy dealing with, they're easy to deal with, and they're profitable? Yeah, you know, and, absolutely. And those are the people you want to emulate. So who, you know, tell me, tell me who those customers are and how, you know, and how you best serve them. And I think it's kind of two part because right now it's just small leasing deals. It's personal family friends. So I haven't even gotten into what I would call my ideal kind of category yet, uh -huh. but I would love to find a way to work between that five to 10 to a hundred person office between, sure. you know, 2 million to 20 million where, they're a little bit too big for our farmers, but they're not quite somebody that a major insurance shop is going to be paying time and attention to yet because, you know, I run such a light lean shop, you know, there's not really a ton of overhead. My margin's probably twice as much as a regular broker would get, you know, if they're working for somebody. Tell that to be on there. Yeah, yeah, right. So I can really service those little guys in a way that helps me pay bills, keep the light on. It's really valuable to me, maybe right. give them extra care. Um, then somebody else who might have to collect a few more customers to meet the same sort of, you know, living number, whatever you want to call it. So that's, that's what I'm trying to get in is that, that small business, you know, but small business isn't enough. Mm -hmm. you, know, you need to dive a little bit deeper and every okay. business does. Sure. Yeah. Every business needs to sit there and say, okay, I, I service small business. Mm -hmm. Well, there's millions and millions yeah. and millions <laughs> of small businesses out there and they range from, you know, computer manufacturers to, you know, pharmaceutical reps to whatever and yeah. everything in between. The question is within those small business, within those 10 to hundred person companies, mm -hmm. what types of compute companies do you like? What kind of companies resonate with you? What kind of companies can you solve things a little bit better for, mm -hmm. or you have a better solution for than your competitors do. And that's where you yeah. really need to niche down. Mm -hmm. I could see that. I have wanted to grow into like cyber insurance and cannabis insurance just because they're two new industries. And my theory was kind of grow with the growth markets, but I think I'm trying to be targeted before I have kind of enough broad experience. And right now I think I just got to collect customers and see what industries I click with, what works um, with, with my past history. I have a lot of real estate contacts and I really understand kind of the pain points of the brokers or the property managers or having, you know, contractors make sure they have the right insurance in place for a project. So that's something where my old network and experience might be a help. But yeah, right now I'm just trying to figure out how do I, you know, kind of knock those doors. How do I provide value? Where do I kind of fit and what can I build onto from there? Um, I do have a lot of personal lines insurance experience too. So I think when you get to that high net worth, small business owner, a value add could be, I understand their homes, I understand their recreational homes, I understand Absolutely. their auto, I understand how those personal assets could affect the business and vice versa. So how do you make sure you're whole, you know, both sides of the fence? You yeah. know, that could be something. Yeah. And, and you're getting there, you're narrowing yeah. it down. You're right, when you're first starting out within any business, and mm -hmm. I don't care what company you're in, I don't care what business you're in, yeah. you start off by being a generalist. Mm -hmm. And the quicker you can narrow it down to sit there and say, I only deal with real estate brokers mm -hmm. that deal with, you know, $5 million homes and above in this neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I specialize in and, you know, or commercial properties of this size within this neighborhood, mm -hmm. within this, you know, this casualty, you know, this group of, of, of insurance, you know, technology, this is what I do. And the, the quicker any business can get to that narrow point, the quicker any mm -hmm. business can sit there and say, this is who I help. And these are the people I don't help. Yeah. You know, this is what I do. This is where my sweet spot is. This is, this is my jam. Yeah. This is what I'm really, <laughs> really good at. And this is something I really, really enjoy doing. You know, the quicker you can articulate that both, you know, through your social media, through the way mm -hmm. you speak to everybody, the way you network, the way you go to trade shows, the way you sit one-to-one -one with customers, the more they consider and say, oh, okay, Brett does this. Yeah. I've got 10 people I know that do this. Those are 10 people I can refer to Brett. Mm -hmm. But if people say, oh, you do insurance. Yeah, exactly. There's a million people that do insurance. And they yeah. do, you know, some do it really well and some people don't. But the more you can say, no, I do this specific type of insurance for these type of people, and this is why I'm really, really good at it. Mm -hmm. 
then those people will flock to you. Seth Godin says people like us do things like this. Yeah. So when, like you, when you take a look and you sit there and say, okay, who is the audience of the people that are just, just like the people that are doing that I'm already doing business with? Well, those are the people that are already going to see value in what you do mm -hmm. because they trust the people that trust you. Kind of already established in the market. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think I tried to start there and pick off like in a vacuum what I thought were good ideas, but when you kind of hit the real world, you have to pay attention to the actual outcomes and see what clicks. So that's the search I'm in right now is how do I take kind of the wide brand? How do I take what I thought would be the things I was chasing, kind of step back, kind of start kind of ground zero and just sort of build up and see what I can lean into. Um, when you have a brand that's somewhat general, like my insurance website, we talk about everything from commercial to personal to yep. a little bit of health, a little bit of benefits, life. Would you recommend new pages? Would you recommend campaigns? Would you recommend, like you said, tweaking your branding to those verticals that you think are going to be interesting? I think, you know, as you said, the sooner you can sit there and say, I do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and get rid of everything else on your website, yeah. the better off you are. Or turn the volume way down on or everything. Turn the volume way down or put it yeah. in a back burner somewhere. Exactly. You, know, it, it, yeah. you, you can have those conversations afterwards and say, oh, by mm -hmm. the way, since I'm already taking care of this for you, by the way, we already do you know, personal lines with that as well. Is there something that I can take care of for you? And that can become a conversation on mm -hmm. the side, but you need to be able to focus. Mm -hmm. And you need to focus your website, your social media, everything, and be able to sit there and say, this is what I do and this is what I do well. Like I tell mm -hmm. people on my website, I consult, I do workshops and keynote addresses. Yep. That's it. That's it. That's what we do. You know, and write an awesome book. Those, I, and I'm an author. Okay. But that's, <laughs> you know, that, what, that came out of the consulting. Yeah. You know, and and, and the, the book you know, takes care of everything. Yeah. But what it is, is be able to sit there and, you know, this has taken me 15, 20 years to figure mm -hmm. out. It doesn't come overnight and you'll make mistakes and you'll make changes mm -hmm. and you'll sit there and say, okay, we tried this, that didn't work. What did we learn from it? Let's move in this direction. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. But the more you can sit there and the more focused you can be and the more you, you can articulate that this is what I'm really good at, those people will flock to you. You know, those you people would sit there and say, oh, okay, this guy's an expert in this. Great. I need that expert. Brett's the guy that I'm going to go to. This, this may not be a question we can have a direct answer to, but I'm wondering how do you speed up the learning curve to what's going to fit, what's not? And, but also how do you not get too impatient where you're like, okay, I tried this vertical for two or three days. Okay. I tried this for two or three days. I tried this for two or three days. So I'm trying to find that balance of, giving an idea like chasing, you know, cyber insurance for medical offices, offices, you know, yeah. associations for a couple of days, and then moving on to something else. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out that balance between chasing something versus seeing what it's, it's not a couple of days. It's a couple of months. Yeah. You know, it, it really is. Yeah. It's sitting there going, okay, I look at this. I come from the direct mail world. Mm -hmm. You know, 25 years ago, 24 years ago, I killed a lot of trees. Yeah. yeah, I killed an <laughs> enormous amount of trees. And what you learn in the direct mail business is you test one thing. Okay. And you keep testing. You sit there and say, okay, let's look at the subject line. We, we're going to send out email to all these different people and we're going to test two or three different subject lines and see which one resonates. The mm -hmm. letter is going to be exactly the same. The, the message is going to be exactly the same. The look and feel is going to be exactly the same. The only thing we're going to test is the subject line on the email or mm -hmm. the or the direct mail piece. Once you've got that nailed down, then you start sitting there going, okay, what does the first paragraph look like? Mm -hmm. What does the concluding paragraph look like? What does the PS line start looking like? Mm -hmm. And you start sitting there going, how do I make small incremental changes to make things a little bit better? And it's it's not changing everything at once. It's not saying, okay, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this today, we're gonna talk about this tomorrow, we're gonna talk about the other thing the other day. No, it's sitting there and say, okay, we're going to focus for the next three months on this type of insurance. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start telling a really compelling story about why us and this type of insurance and see if that resonates. And if it resonates and you start getting some traction, then you, then you, you modify it. If it doesn't modify, if it doesn't resonate, if you're not getting your clients, mm -hmm. you have to sit back and say, why? Before you go on to the next thing, you got to sit there and say, why? Why is like it not that you're starting at the, 
at the top though too with the title with the hook can you bring them in and then you worry about the minutia but sure. kind of first things first you know yeah because if you if you can't hook somebody mm -hmm. if you can't get them on the line you'll never reel them in mm -hmm. you know if people don't understand right at the very beginning what's in it for me it's it's the song that everybody loves to sing you know, mm -hmm. it's what's in it for me. How is this person, how is Broker Brett and his agency yeah. benefiting me? Because if it doesn't benefit me, I don't care. I don't care if it benefits, you know, the guy down the street. I don't care right. if it be benefits, you know, my, my second cousin twice removed. Mm -hmm. You know, if it doesn't benefit me, it doesn't matter. And therefore, you need to sit there and say, who are the people that I can benefit? Mm -hmm. Who are the people that have a problem already that I have a solution for. And if you can figure that out, if you can figure out and say, ah, these people, this group of people have this problem. I already have a solution that can fix that problem. Now go up and talk to those people. That's cool. I have one like tool and tool chest that I'm kind of working on right now that I think will be helpful for like property managers and real estate guys, just cause I know their world. I know what they run into. Um, yeah, and I might have heard it from you, but yeah, kind of who are you? What do you do? Just quick, you know, people have to know in like a bite, you know, they're definitely a work in progress, but my cards at the top say insurance sales, uh, con service and consulting, you know, you want to make sure right away, it just kind of. It resonates. Yeah. And ask people, mm -hmm. find four or five people that you like, that like you, that trust yeah. you, not your mother, not your best friend, <laughs> not your wife, you know, people that you do business with and say, why do you do business with me? Mm -hmm. It says, I'm That's building cool. my brand. I'm looking to change. I'm looking to get better. What are the things that you think about? When you think about Broker Brett, what are the things mm -hmm. that you think about? What are the key words? If you were to put my name in a Google search, mm -hmm. what are the words that you would use? The other cool one I've heard you say is ask the people kind of what they want to know, what they need help with. Ask your clients, ask whomever, you know, what information is pertinent to their, their needs, their pain points. I always thought that was a really good one. Yeah. You know, then produce an article or whatever else from there. Because yeah. that's what it is. It's it's yeah. it's not trying to go out and reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's not going out and saying, "I've got this brilliant, you know, new widget. Now I'm going to go try to sell it." Yeah. If, if you don't know that your new widget actually has a purpose and somebody already cares and has a problem that that widget will solve, it doesn't matter how good it is. It's the joke I mm -hmm. use about the twenty slice toaster. <laughs> not that many people that will see benefit in a twenty slice to toaster. You know, yeah. got seven or eight kids. Yeah, okay, a 20 slice toaster is perfect. But how many of us have seven, eight, 10 kids? I was going to say, if you're running a hotel, you know, maybe. Maybe if you're running a hotel. Yeah. But the thing is, is what's the niche audience? Okay, mm -hmm. there's hotels. Hotels would need it. Great. Then you take that 20 slice toaster and you aim it directly at hotels. You know, the bed and breakfast, the things like mm -hmm. that. And you sit there and say, okay, this toaster is not for everybody. 90% mm -hmm. of the marketplaces is, could care less about it. But this 10%, this 5%, this 2% of the market could absolutely use this. So those are the people that you talk to. Mm -hmm. Forget about the 92%. Forget about the 95%. You know, focus on the, the ones that actually have the money in their hands and are raising it up and saying, I have a problem. Can you fix this? Out of this need. Yeah, for me, the other interesting thing trying to start a business in Orange County next to LA County and having a good network is it's almost like a problem of plenty where there's everything to chase and you feel like the deal should be there. You feel like something's happening. You're trying to find that one thing, but you're a little bit frantic because you're like, I know business is transacting. I know there are needs here. Yeah. Sir? Squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Oh, it's like, what's, what's new? What's shiny yeah. object? Exactly. Um, so I think it is a little bit of that slowing down, see what need you can service rather than what need you think's out there. You know? it's, it's, it is, you know, there's a million opportunities out there. There are. Mm -hmm. In every single business, there's a million opportunities that you can go mm -hmm. after. The question is, which are the right opportunities for you? Yeah. Yeah. What are the opportunities that make sense for you? Where's the low-hanging fruit? Mm -hmm. Where's the thing that's right in your wheelhouse? Where are the people that get what you get? Where are the people you understand? And you can speak their language and you can feel their pain points mm -hmm. and you can have empathy for them. Those are the people that you want to have as customers. And we, we, uh, you know, we have that, we have that opportunity. We take a look at it and we sit there and go, okay, how do we build, you know, how do we build a plan mm -hmm. and, you know, focus on a market that makes sense for us?
Mm -hmm. Because you're right, there's a million opportunities out there. It's a matter of finding the opportunity that works for you. Kind of your brand meshes with. That's what your brand is. Your, yeah. your brand is different from the, you know, even if you've got seven different brokers in the same office, mm-hmm. each one has their own brand. Yeah. Each one like, has their own audience. Each one has their own solution set. Each one has their own, you know, you all sell insurance. Yeah. But you all sell it a little differently into different people. Kind of different strengths, different weaknesses. Like I know, I feel like my strength is muddling through things that are relatively complex and then communicating them in a pretty simple, straightforward way. So, you know, find who that fits with, find who doesn't want to get caught in the weeds, but wants to trust you to help them solve a problem. You know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, and that's what you got to do. You have to sit there and say, this is where the solution lies. Mm-hmm. You know, these are the people that I can help go out and help them. Mm-hmm. Cause if you try to help everybody, if you try to give everybody, you know, equal help, if you try to solve everybody's problems, you're not solving anybody's problems. I'm doing All that you're doing a little is you're bit. Going from this to that. And I'm chasing what I think is hot a little bit. I need right. to kind of stop trying to solve every problem, stop chasing what I think makes sense and start looking at who I am, what I do, where I can help, what pain I understand. Yeah, no, it's, you know, definitely was looking forward to getting this conversation today. I feel like I'm not having brand professional sort of synchronicity right now. And I got to figure out where that sweet spot is, you know? So. And, and you know what? You'll make mistakes. We all do. You know, we, we all go down the rabbit hole. We all find ourselves in a place where you're sitting there going, how did I find myself here? You know, and that's, that's part of life. Yep. And it's a matter of sitting there going, realizing that you're down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Realizing that, wait a second, before we go 10 steps further down this rabbit hole, we realize it's getting darker. Yeah. You know, there's no light at the end of this tunnel. Maybe <laughs> time to back up a little bit and turn around. Oh, there's a light. It's up there. Yeah. Okay, fine. Up we go turn around, figure out what we did wrong, reevaluate, fix it, move forward. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes in the wrong direction once. Everybody goes in the wrong direction sometimes twice. It's what we learn from it and how we grow from it Mm -hmm. makes us better. Oh, heck yeah. It's more valuable to our clients. Yeah. That's why you trust the old kind of kind of war horses have been through it a little bit you know guys have seen a few things kind of had a few good ones a few bad ones yeah. you know those are the guys you got to kind of learn that you can't can't skip steps you know yeah. not going to come out perfect when i first started in sales 25 30 years ago there was a great system where the junior sales guys were put under the wing of of, of a mentor mm. and those mentors got paid an override so if i made ten dollars they made two cool and yeah it gave them justification to actually spend time with you. It wasn't wasting yeah. their time. You weren't a bother. You were, they were helping you. They were helping you get ahead, mm-hmm. but there was something in it for them as well. And I think that that world is missing today. There's mm-hmm. that, you know, there's nothing, you know, mentors are important. Coaches are oh, yeah. important. You know, relationships are important, but there has to be something in it for the mentor mm-hmm. you know, to be able to, to, for them to invest the time to spend with you. And that's important. And it's it's, a real sometimes world it's monetary, sometimes it's other. You know, yeah. I get a lot of benefit from just spending time with other people because I mm-hmm. learn from it. But it's, you know, you have to find out what works well for that symbiotic relationship mm-hmm. and be able to find somebody that works well with you. Uh, makes 100% sense, especially these days where you feel like you can find an article, hop on YouTube, have whatever figured out, talking to the people who have actually been through it and kind of seeing, you know, the corner, seeing the corks in the game. I think that's huge, you know. Because like you're saying, it's not... And they have to coach you up as you, you know, everyone's going to play the game a little bit differently, you know? So. Well, I'm going to ask you one last question. Okay. Absolutely. This is going to be the one and you know, yeah. this is going to be the culmination of the conversation. We have. <laughs> when you do walk out of a meeting and you do, you know, get in your car and you get away. Yeah. What's the one thing you want people to think about you when I you're think- not in the room? Cause that's your brand. Oh yeah, 100%. And I've, I've built a, a brand of being a very nice guy and like, well, guy, which is good. I don't want to keep that going, but I hope, especially being around insurance to be knowledgeable, you know, that when you leave like, well, they really knew our risk, our need, our situation inside and out. That's the thing I think I'd want to lean into a little bit more right now. Familiar can kind of make complex conversation a little bit easier. Somebody's easy to work with, but I think going forward, just that knowledge base would be a real nice thing to bring to the table. And to be able to communicate it well with others, you know, kind of be able to share that knowledge too, not just in kind of overlord way, but more like 
hey, this is what I've learned. This is what I know. This will be helpful to you and kind of put the cards on the table. Yeah. So. Nice. And never forget yeah. the words, I don't know, let me mm -hmm. go find out, are valuable words. Uh, oh, yeah. Customers appreciate that. Yeah. You, you can't know everything. Mm -hmm. You're in a complex world that's yeah. constantly changing. And having the ego and the lack of ego to say, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm not sure. Let me go find out and get back to you and actually do yeah. makes you far more valuable than the person who tries to muddle through an answer and get it wrong. Right. 100 percent. Appreciate that. Brett, thanks for being on the show. I hope you know, hope this was valuable to everybody. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it immensely. Heck yeah, Ben. No, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, to be continued, I'm sure we'll hop on another pod at some point. Absolutely. And uh, no, I appreciate it, though. Keep putting out the uh, great content, too, man. I appreciate it. paying attention. All right. You just hang out in the green room. I'm going to just say goodbye to everybody. I'll be right back. Sounds good. All right. I hope you found this valuable. It was a lot of fun talking to Brett. You know what? It's got a lot of energy, a lot of ideas. And you know what? It's a matter of focusing. It's a matter of sitting there going, what direction do you want to go? Who are the people that you can serve? Who are the people that you can actually help and move the needle for? And those are the people that are your clients. And it's being able to communicate that effectively. Now, my name's Ben Baker, and my company is Your Brand Marketing. Now, nine to five, Monday to Friday, we consult, we do workshops and keynotes on brand message, market, vision, and value. We help tell your story. We help you stop being a commodity and start being a brand worth loving. But every Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, this is the Your Living Brand.live show. We'll see you next week. Enjoy your day.